Wow, it has been a long time since I've heard that intro music, but welcome everyone. We are back. We are the Triple Triad Podcast. I am your host, Emo Tempest, and today we have the whole crew and a few uh, very special guests. Uh, you guys know uh, Alejandro and Andy Carmona. Say hi, guys. Greetings. Okay, Andy's there, but he's a little shy today. That's fine. Uh, our special guests today are TCG Tacos, a uh, new up-and-coming uh, <laughs> content creator. Say hi, Tacos. Hello. Uh, and our our very, very, very generous shopkeep, uh, Sergio Bravo from TCG Titans. What's up, everybody? All right. So... Guys, I know it has been a very long time since we've done one of these. Um, I can't even remember the topics we talked about in any of the previous ones. Um, we are in Opus 14 now. We have a lot to cover, uh, but we still aren't going to take up that much time. So, you know, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, so, I will go into our topics. We have uh, we have the Jap list that dropped a little while ago. I want to cover the primals with you guys. Um, I want to talk about if you guys are feeling that some of the the decks that were opus 13 meta if some of them will survive or not we're definitely going to talk about the leviathan ruling that uh, uh, alex posted on facebook yesterday and uh and just overall what kind of cards we're excited for um so yeah i actually want to pass it over to tcg tacos because he's going to start us off um tacos if you remember those jap lists that dropped they were uh water fire uh pirates and uh wind and ice. Uh, what did you think about those when you dropped? When they dropped? Um, uh, you know, the one that, that really interested me the most, I think, was the uh, the water fire, just because it's close to what I was trying to build for the series before then. Um, I don't know. That's the one that, that interested me the most. But uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, did it make you want to build water fire or I know you're, oh. I know, I know you're limited to, um, your series, the new game plus right now, but, uh, is that something that you're going to shoot for and move into that direction for your series or is it something else? Uh, yeah, but I mean, like if we pull the cards for sure, um, I mean, what, we gotta get garlands. I gotta take a look at this list. Uh, yeah, um, there's, uh, I think the L the L's are, you know, triple Larsa. There's actually no Garlands in here, which I, it's not a Knight's deck, right? So it's like, uh, um, it's just like a fire water, fire water EX burst list, right? It plays the clouds, Susanos, Leviathans, and then like every summon is an EX burst with the exception of the one Amaterasu. Um, um, okay. but yeah. All right. Um, what about you, Sergio? But for the JP list, um, when I first saw them, like, I wasn't too, like, super excited over any of them, really, at the outset. Um, and then I actually watched Kurosawa's, like, videos on Twitch of the games that they played with those deck lists. And I, I gotta say that Firewater EX Burst deck really got me excited. Uh, I think Eureka was the one piloting it. And uh, it was really interesting because they really used Larsa to, like, to, like, major benefit. And probably the most interesting card in there, which wasn't even new, was the Leviathan Summon that lets you draw two cards and then put a card to either top or bottom. Yeah. So he was using that in the AX Burst deck to kind of like leverage which burst he wanted to put on top of the deck. And uh, that was that was pretty spicy. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm very, I, I was playing that card a while ago when the Folka OTK was the thing. Um, <laughs> But it is, it's definitely nice for something that has maybe close to, what, 25, almost 30 EX bursts, I think. So, okay. Uh, it, did it affect the way you built for, like, did, did that list or these lists affect the way you built for our locals the Monday? Did they influence uh, you at all? No, because I actually just saw those, like, um, like, Monday or Tuesday, I think it was, that I saw those lists. So, going into Monday, I had just, like was super obsessed with leviathan and that was what i was like for sure 100 percent gonna play going into monday even if i couldn't figure out the list correctly but uh seeing this now definitely makes me think about some other strategies i think this set is like so wide open right now there's like probably a million decks i want to try and i don't know when i'm gonna get the time to build them and try them 
<laughs> I think we're all in that boat, honestly. Um, I know I, I've probably up until, like, when I got the set, and then up until Monday when we went to Locals, I built maybe eight decks on FF decks. And they were all kind of, like, very similar, but it was just too many. So uh, that's, okay. <laughs> There's a lot to go through. Uh, Andy, you there, buddy? Yo. <laughs> all right. Um, what did, did I get introduced? Yes, you did. And you... Did he... <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> I, I told them you were being a little shy, but that's okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I was being shy by taking a whiz at the Whiz Palace, which is what I call the toilet. It's called it the Whiz Palace. Is, uh, do, you where, get, do you get the VIP treatment there? Or? Where, where's that reference from? Anybody? Uh, Parks and Rec? Oh, no. no. No Parks and Rec friends here? We, we're, I'm a fan, but I don't know all the lines like I know The Office. <laughs> I haven't seen it 40 billion times I mean, over and over again. I need new, I need new friends that can name new deck list. And speaking of new deck list, man, all this 14, right? Aren't we so hyped about it? <laughs> man, I sure am. Uh, we are. Uh, no, the question was when those Jap lists dropped from Kurosawa, um, like probably the day of the set, what did you think of them? Oh, he didn't send them to me directly, so I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So then, so then gonna, when you were... When you were uh, I think uh, Rice posted them on, on Facebook. Um, but if they didn't, since you didn't see them, um, what was your motivation for building decks when you, when you started for this, for this set, obviously? I think I, I remember seeing that post. I think it was more like those were exhibition, like kind of like a introductory to what can be expected in Opus 14, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think it read something like it was a round robin or something. Yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah. It's kind of like a fun, fun, funsy friendly thing that they can do in Japan. Yeah. Are they playing in, in, like, in person to person now? Uh, I I don't know, actually. If anybody knows, Alex, Tacos? Chat? I mean, uh, community, I, if you I, can. I, uh, I thought I heard somebody say that they were starting to implement some restrictions again. All right, well, that's good. That's That actually gives us hope for, as long as they're putting in restrictions and, you know, starting to play in person to person, that gives us hope for, you know, majors in the future, I guess. But let's not get our hopes up just yet. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's, that's where my concern grows. It's like, if that's cool that they're, you know, lifting some restrictions, but then I don't know how they're, like, fluctuating because they had to implement more because of the Olympics, right? Right. And then, you know, who knows? But I'm just hoping that that somehow doesn't, trickle down into official play that we can see sometime in the next couple of months that they can start announcing some stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I think that's a whole other topic that we can. Yeah. <laughs> you, you actually <laughs> stray away from for, for a while to not get people's hopes up and uh, don't talk about stuff that we don't have as much. No, about it's, then it's just all speculation and speculation is okay. Allowed in this, on this podcast, we're, we're not all about the facts and the, we're, 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 we like to be interesting, right? We like the what ifs. Um, but actually, okay. it's funny that you brought up the, the Olympics there too, because I think I read somewhere um, from the Yu Gi Oh community that there's a petition to make Yu Gi Oh an official Olympic sport. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And that's all the time I've got for today. Thanks, kid. <laughs> but we don't talk about that about now. Yu Gi Oh. Jeez. Um, so, so, so I, okay, so what's my question again? No, actually, I have a better question for you now. Since you didn't see the list, that's good. We can actually move on to the next topic. Um, yeah. What do you think the best primal is from the set? What I think the best primal is so far with my experience, what I've seen, uh, it's a tie between, what's her name, Lakshmi, right? Lakshmi. Right. Lakshmi. Lakshmi and... Um, when Leviathans, yeah, I think the water primals are just the really strongest right now because of how little effort you need to kind of do it. I mean, they all kind of, they get <laughs> one that's kind of like, you know, the rare, the common, whatever, and they do like one thing really well. And then, then there, there's like the legendary one, which is like, damn, this is like basic deck around it, right? Um, but when you have absurd effects that can happen like on either player's turn, Leviathan takes the nice big primal cake. And, um, well, now that you, th well, if you're thinking that, are you planning on building, I know you're originally known for like the lightning guy and your, uh, your current nickname is the purple variant. <laughs> Last mm -hmm. I heard, mm -hmm. um, I like where this question's going. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, well, so the, I can tell you how wrong you are, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna, does that mean you're going to build uh, water finally? 
Wrong. <laughs> It's always been it's always been a thing of mine that uh, Andy and I play water decks in tournaments and we just top a one two finish like the good old days in Boston. But <laughs> yeah, that, no, that's never gonna happen. Top dead, piloting some sort of water shenanigans. No, to be honest, yeah, uh, uh, I mean, Opus Thirteen had me expanding my horizons by not playing anything lightning just because I was kind of not into the game. Man, I don't know, Opus 13 just, like, accentuated more of the tribal shit. So I'm just like, hmm, I guess decks are just building themselves now. But, Opus 14, we're steering back to what Final Fantasy, at least for me, was. Where it's like, here's a bunch of good cards. Go see how broken you can go make a deck. And they're not like, hmm, well, if I play enough of this tribal, I win. <laughs> yes! You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you 100% there. Um, I think every primal, like for me, if I have to answer the question, um, I'm, yeah, I think Leviathan's pretty busted, but I think that every primal has its balance. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but every primal, with the exception of Bismarck, sort of, has a way to deal with every other primal, uh, respectively. Like Leviathan can bounce something and reduce by 9k, right? They're all within that 9k range. Uh, Garuda does the same thing, right? She'll come in and break a single 9k, and then when you play another one, or play something else of 9k or higher, she'll let you draw a card. Uh, Susano deals 9k to the board. Um, Ramu pretty much says, uh, I, I touch you with a summon, you die. And, <laughs> and Ravana just has reduced damage. But um, So I, I think in that respect, it doesn't matter which way you go. Uh, you're going to be able to deal with the other primals, and for that reason... I think this meta is going to be very, very diverse. And like you said, back to what we like, what we love about this game. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Some people like going, I'm going to chuck nine monks at you and win. What do you think about that? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Some people like that shit. Some people like that shit. They go, oh, I've got nine samurais on the board. Sweet. Nine yeah, nine. and the Dragoon guys yeah. too. Uh <laughs> oh, yeah, the Dragoon guys. Those are all like bottom tier. <laughs> I like Dragoons. <laughs> you played Dragoon. Yeah. <laughs> More than once. And, and, and so I speak it like truth it, no? Bottom <laughs> tier, that's... Hello, I'm raising my hand. <laughs> uh, so, Tacos, uh, are, are you in the same boat with us, though? Do you think that Leviathan is the best primal, or do you have a take on something else? He's not in a boat, he's in a taco truck. <laughs> uh, Got him. I haven't tested them enough, but I would have to agree. I mean, just coming in the play, what you should basically just reducing three things if, if like at most uh for 9k i mean that, that seems pretty absurd right right and and now again asking you in because of your series or whatever and your your limitations which i always find so interesting how you're able to play you know under budget and not full like everyone else and you're still able to top at locals consistently so it's very good um are you gonna which which one are you gunning for first then because some of they're not all legendaries, but which primal is going to be your first pick then? Like your, well, I mean, it's it's whatever just you know lands on my lap, bro. Uh, I'm not <laughs> picky. You know, we we play with what we got. I think Alex played it best. You know, uh, Tacos gets good like bad cards and does good with them. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think forever be like mesmerized by that saying. <laughs> I mean, it's a good saying. <laughs> it struck a taco chord in him. It takes a... I love it. <laughs> You're not wrong, though. I mean, that's what I was telling him the other day. It was just like, oh, was it Monday? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Those are locals. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, there goes tacos playing another pile of bad cards. But he's, like, <laughs> but he, but he's so comfortable playing them. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, I was just meaning, bro. Like, I, I couldn't think of anything. I just do, like... It literally felt like I just threw a bunch of cards in my deck box, and I was like, okay, cool, that's what we're doing. Yeah, but it, it still felt like a constructed deck. Like, it still felt like, like like you said, like you were very comfortable with it, and you're trying to figure out, like, these crazy lines, but at the same time, it's like, well, he still yeah. said this was like a pile of junk. I, I just wanted to do the Gilgamesh thing. That's all I wanted. Uh, so, Alex, uh, any takes on any of this? Oh, uh, say again. Sorry, John, you broke up. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, so what's your thoughts on the primals? Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of on, like, that new dad meta. <laughs> so, uh, honestly, I'll be honest, I, I, I can't wait to explore this meta, but I haven't had much time. The 
for for locals, for example, on Monday, I came expecting a draft, and I saw like an amalgamation of Hancock's Windwater with the Japanese list that posted with the Sky Pirates, and then I uh, talked a little bit with Nick Schnell and them boys, and I just threw it together like Windwater Sky Pirates, and that's really my only taste of Opus 14, but. I loved it, man. All of those Windwater primals, they just they just flow together so smoothly. Uh, even in, in games with me, Sergio, and you, uh, it just feels like Lakshmi is just a good play on like any turn. Um, it's just it's just such a good card. So uh, obviously, everyone's talking about Leviathan, and I think that's the obvious power card in the set. But I think Lakshmi early unanswered just kind of wins you the game. Uh, over time, so um, looking looking to see what can be done with that card to really break it. Yeah, no, and 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 the, I like the way you put it too. When we played, uh, it's like dropping a turn one tens in, right? Like I'm I'm gonna draw yeah. I'm gonna be drawing three cards every turn. I might not have access to them all at once, but you know that's still three cards that I'm drawing. Um, the other thing I, I kind of mentioned too in my in my other video is that like the our summon choices are changing a little, right? They're a little more utility based and kind of combo based. So a lot of decks, um, I, I guess this this might just be my speculation too. And guys, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, is that we don't have you know I'm gonna play hit you for seven k right away like big damages from most summons anymore. Uh, so something like Lakshmi surviving a little longer seems very common to me. Um, Sergio, do you, would you agree about the summons? Or? Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Like, if you look at a lot of, like, the win list, you're trying to run things that combo with, like, other cards. So, like, you're running, like, if you're in, like, Ice Wind, you might be running Pandemonium to combo with Bear Life. Right. So that's not exactly something you're just prepared to deal the 7K right away to the card like Lakshmi. Um, and I think that's pretty common also, like, in an early meta type of setting where... People are just trying to make their decks combo, and they're not thinking about like counterplays. Right. So we'll probably see more like spot removal sneaking into decks like a little bit later on, maybe in a couple weeks or so. Yeah, and um, like the other thing is too is that Lakshmi has that once she's at five cards, she takes reduced damage. Right. Uh, I can't remember exactly how much it is. I think it's like two k less. Two two k less. Yeah, yeah. See, it's two k less. So uh, if I'm going second, right, I'm dropping Lakshmi. I'm gonna end my turn on five. Good luck. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's just, she's get again, we're going to need to, the summons are going to have to change uh, a little bit, especially since being as Leviathan is going to be the, the, the big choice for everyone. Water is going to be more, be around everywhere. So something to think about for everyone listening. Uh, and I'm actually glad, well, we'll get more into the, no, you know what? Let's go to it now. The Leviathan ruling. We need to talk about this. Uh, Alex posted the other day, um, well, I shared with you guys what I saw on Twitter, right? And the question was, uh, if Althea bounces Leviathan, does Leviathan still trigger? Um, and does he get two? Um, the answer was yes from Square. Now, me personally, I, I don't know if it's a Yu-Gi-Oh thing or like any other card game. For me, like an effect like that has to, uh, can only resolve if the forward is on the field, right? But um, everyone's saying that like once the card sees that it's being removed that these effects will trigger. Um, obviously, this is the way we're going to rule it now, but uh, Tacos, if you don't mind taking this one to start, what did what are your thoughts about that, man? Like, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen this interaction before. Um, I, I honestly, I, I'm not too sure. Okay, that's fair. Uh, you, I don't know. Did you play uh, Alex or Serge on, on Monday? No, I, I dodged both of them. Oh, okay. So, the, okay. so then let me pass this one on to Sergio. Um, being as he topped on Monday. Uh, what are your thoughts on the ruling? Man, that's even better for my deck. <laughs> <laughs> that's even better for the Leviathan deck. That's way too powerful. That doesn't make any sense. Like, I thought it was really weird. Like, when... Like, if somebody had asked me that question, like, two seconds before reading the post, I would have 100% said that's not how that works. Um, so when they showed that ruling... I, I my immediate reaction was this is one of those rulings that they're going to retract later and be like oh just kidding it's a translation issue I meant to say that this doesn't trigger because that seems like really weird because that would also mean that based on like like timing right if you bounced a Bismarck right like if your opponent had a Bismarck in play that Bismarck would also draw a card 
off of itself bouncing back to him. Yeah, and that's what they're saying. Yeah, I was just about to say. They're saying that all of that works. Yeah. yeah just like so that. Everything works that way. It seems so strange. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So I, I, got, I have a little something to say about that. Please, that post, jump, in, jump in, yeah. jump in. So um, it's kind of interesting because uh, – some people answered like they they weren't that sure, and then some of the answers were, oh yeah, that's just how that works, and then some of the answers were like borderline rude, like <laughs> that's how every other card in the set has ever worked ever. Yeah, and that one got like a bunch of likes, and uh, I I really disagree with that because uh, this is the first time we've seen this specific wording. Right. Work. Mm -hmm. Like they said it that, oh, everything that goes to the break zone ever triggers this effect. But every card that says when whatever goes to the break zone specifically calls out the card name of the thing that's going to the break zone. Whereas this one just says when a character. And, you know, I understand the argument is that, you know, Leviathan's a character. So he sees himself breaking and whatever. And that's fine. But I think they could have worded it a little better. Like when. A, when a character or Leviathan is returned from the hand, and then and then I don't think there would be any question at all. Yeah. But uh, since this is like a new wording. To me, it wasn't as obvious as the tryhard grind lords were making it out to be. Like I was insane for asking, for even for even attempting to postulate this question. <laughs> uh, and I, I agree with you too. I don't think we've ever had a a situation with any other card up until now where where bouncing it was a plus, right? Like. Uh, other than just being able to replay it. Um, and so the other thing I, I found funny to go to what you were saying about the post, no one actually hit us with like the advanced ruling guide to any of this, right? So I'm still personally in like not convinced. Uh, I'll play it that way, don't get me wrong, because there's mad value in that, um, obviously, and it's just super safe and there's no wrong way to go. You can't mess that up, right? Like it's too good. And like Sergio said, it just makes his deck better. It makes the deck better, yeah. But uh, I'm going to wait for the FAQ, like when they drop it for this set. And if things don't get clarified then, then whatever. I'll, I'll jump aboard. But I want someone to find the advanced rules. I, I'm not going to go through it, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the nice... The one that got me to be like, all right, cool, is someone very calmly just said... All card. I think it was Sam Prime. He just said it very basically. He said, "All cards see themselves leaving." And cool. I guess that makes sense. But you're right. Like I haven't seen the advanced rule line number one dot one dot four where it says that. But um, to me, when it was worded like that, you know, I guess it's fine. But it, it is an, a very odd situation with some new. Uh, card wording in my opinion yeah uh andy what are your thoughts on the ruling yeah on the ruling or on people's attitudes online <laughs> and cyberbullying let's start with the ruling watch me being <laughs> good um man i've got a lot of thoughts where do i pile them up and drop them on you uh right no, here man. On Look, this little it's box. just it's like i said it's one of those instances where i thought that um yes because it's you know, the way that the stack resolves, it's like, cool, you're targeting your Leviathan, right, for bouncing. Once the effects start resolving, it's like, well, this thing's not really on the on the field, but... So how does it know, you know? Right. How how would it ever know that it's it, it itself is being bounced, and now once it's time to resolve, there's nothing on the field. You know, like, like I get that there's similar instances for, like, for example, an Ida leaving the field, Right. It's like, but that whole thing where it's like, how much power is she doing? Like, you attack, right? And then you target a dole forward, and they go, cool, bounce Ida, right? It's like, well, okay, she's not technically being powered up anymore by Zions, but it's like, no, technically it's the last known power. So she knows where, where her power was as she was lifted, right? As she was bounced back. Right. So it's just like, things like that, that's where that confusion, like, it, it stems down to, like, older cards, too. Only because we don't, we don't know. I guess the full interaction, unless like you seek out the elder gods of this game, 
<laughs> and they explain it to you like line by line. Well, this is why this character knows its last known power. This is why this character understands that even though the fact is resolving, it knows that it was technically still on the field. All that stuff. It, it takes all that into consideration. So it's best to just get like a clear cut understanding of what it is and just nip it in the bud instead of left to interpretation by people who, you know, who kind of know rulings who maybe know rulings better than others, and then people who flat out just piggyback off of people and then like to use their own words and not knowing really what's what's happening. Yeah, and and I, and that's why I didn't mm-hmm. comment because I don't know anything anymore. Like that, whatever level one judge test I pass is useless now, especially with like seven sets after that. <laughs> so yeah, man. Look, I, I have this saying: it says, "Not my color, not my problem." <laughs> that's, that's a, yeah, you know, so it's just like, cool, you can make up whatever you want. Like, if you want to tell me that this card draws you nine cards, cool, not my color, not my problem. All I know is that without that ruling, and I try to pull that shit at locals, we would have just taken the double loss, because there's no way you guys would have, like, like no one would have let either of that proceed. Right. Right. You're absolutely right, 100%. And and you were like, dude, it's like not... <laughs> not work like that, and I'd be like, yeah, it does. And you'd be like, no, it does not. And we would have just taken the double loss and gone to eat tacos. I guarantee it. Guaranteed. For those for those who don't know, our, one of our rituals is to go eat uh, at this taco truck right after locals on Monday if we get out early enough. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the ritual is not to go there. The ritual is to think that we're going to go there, only to find out that it's closed. That has been yeah. the ritual for That's weeks real. in a row. Yeah, so, sometimes we get lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To waste a little bit more gas than needed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well but it's you know I, I i'll take that i'll take that chance man i'll take that chance i like i like the you know or the opportunity high risk high customer. reward <laughs> <laughs> those tacos are just that damn good yeah they really are. <laughs> so if you guys are ever in town for uh south florida miami locals we will invite you to tacos and by invite you i mean you yeah. can come and hang out with I was us paying, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah i mean they're pretty cheap tacos i'll buy you three uh. <laughs> Damn. Well, we were we were thinking of moving. Uh, me and Daniel were discussing, uh, proposing that we move Monday locals, uh, in light of Delta resurgence, to just to the taco trucks since it's an outdoor venue. It's just infinitely more, more safe. <laughs> I don't think opinion. they. I, <laughs> well, they don't have product, well, but that's not different from any other store right now. So <laughs> I was gonna say like, I don't have a lot of store credit at the taco truck. <laughs> I think it's fine. I'm like it could be supported by TCG Titans. Right. <laughs> I love that thing. It's a good site. Uh, <laughs> if you guys want to stop by TCG Titans, check the link down below. <laughs> I think he still has. A link. Yes. I think he still has uh, cloud full art clouds for sale. I'm not sure. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, Definitely not. Yeah, right. yeah, don't 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 make false promises to people. <laughs> <laughs> I said maybe. Uh, they have to go click to find out. <laughs> click the link to find out. <laughs> no. And then Just you get watch. then you get Rick rolled every time you click on it. <laughs> um, all right, all right. Well, we'll see how that ruling thing plays out. Uh, like I said, if it if it stays that way, then sure, it makes the deck better. If it doesn't, oh, actually, follow up question: What happens if you cancel the Althea? Right, like. Uh, does it also cancel the Leviathan because it's technically not bounced? That was my follow-up question, right? Because if it's seeing itself being bounced, do I have to cancel both effects? Do I have to jet this S ability? This? Oh, what you're saying? You're saying yeah. you yeah. Once you cancel the Althea, you're not gonna get a bounce. So, but it's already bounces on resolution. But it's already on the stack, right? That's their argument. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> no, when no, you cancel it, you cancel it. You knock it off the stack. Oh, okay. Like, well, what are you canceling the Althea with, first of all? Like, Porum? Yeah, let's say, hypothetically, Porum. Yeah, let's say Porum. <laughs> well, Jekt, Jekt, we know for sure, because he just cancels all of it, like, right? everything. Yeah, yeah. Really. That, that we know what's up. But, like, if you, like, Porum the Althea or something, then, um, you know, that is an interesting one. I, Thank I you. I see how the card is worded. Like, does the Althea go to hand with the... Yeah, see that? So, so, okay. Yeah, so if... Um, so go ahead, talk. Reads, uh, if a card reads, uh, tap, choose a character other than Althea, you, you control, return. Yeah, so Althea just all of that. All of that she, would just get canceled then. 
Yeah, yeah she was just, just, if she would just tap and they would, her and the target would just stay on the field. Yeah, and, right? yeah. pick them up and go, go ahead, respond, Mary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of that would not occur, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Still, oh, still. That one, that one was an easier one. Uh, no more of those at us. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, all right, I think I can work on that in, into the next uh, the next episode. I'll see if I get some funny judge rulings and see who can answer them. <laughs> yeah, like maybe you could start off next one with um, like how much power does Yoga get per summon in the <laughs> All right, guys. So, so, uh, so. All right, all right, all right. So, I knew this was gonna happen. I, I totally prepared for this. Uh, for everyone listening, everyone at home, uh, cover the kids' ears. But this is true. I cheated, and I know no one likes to hear this. <laughs> Ooh. Now, now, <laughs> now, hold on, hold on. To be fair, and this is how I will defend myself. I, I also have that dad meta brain. <laughs> no, no, but no, but honestly, um, when I read the card, I, I honestly thought it said one uh, K for every summon in the break zone. I took it to locals. Now, two two players in this chat also picked up this card, read it, and said seems good, and they didn't correct me. So we continued the locals as is. Now, it's just we trust you so much, dog. And that was my fault. You even cover imagine that you were the price. Yeah, yeah. So it was really on. It was really on me, and I, I, I'll admit to it. It was wrong. And honestly, I didn't. I didn't find out until the same time Sergio, I think, did when he was watching the same deck being played on the on the RVA weeklies. I was like, ah, what did I do? I, that was I, so funny. That was so funny. Travis was doing the commentary, Travis Pfeiffer, and he was like, oh, this Doga's not big enough. It's only 8K. <laughs> I was like, what is he talking about? That Doga's like 17K. <laughs> How is this possible? Yeah. And I had to, I had to like quickly run on FF decks and reread the card, and that's when the epiphany hit me. Yeah. So. And then, and then I texted Jonathan. I'm, he immediately invited me onto the podcast. I'm, I'm coming clean here in front of all of you. I, I make mistakes. But that's okay, and we learn from them, and we never return to Doga decks. We just play knights and aggro stuff. I saw him. I saw him trash his Doga playset. I threw all and my. I go, what are you? He goes, "What are you doing, bro?" He goes, "Never again." I'll say. I said, "Say goodbye to Doga," and I threw him off a boat. No, 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 he just. He just walked away so sad. I was like, "Man, somebody needs to buy that guy a pizza." And Andy did buy me a pizza. Was it like the Toy Story meme where he's like dropping it and he says, I don't want to play with you anymore? Yes. <laughs> yes he's up. He completely like woodied his doga. I woodied my doga. All right, guys. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. That's the name of the, that's the, name of the, of the episode. Uh, how, to woody, how to woody your doga. <laughs> so we've talked enough about the new stuff and what we're uh, like all the new lists, what we played a little bit. Um, I, I do want to have your take on what do you think will survive uh, from the previous meta? Like, we know Monks, we know um, Fire Lightning, Wind Ice, uh, I guess kind of Storm still. You guys you guys were more involved with the meta a little bit early on, so you could probably answer this more than me. Uh, so I think, Andy, if you want to take this one, what decks do you think are, are going to survive the Opus 14 meta? Survive. And by do you think like what's going to get pushed out or just not as popular? No, on the contrary, like which one is going to continue to see play? And I guess yeah, in that regard, you can also answer which ones do you think are we're oh. probably not going to see anymore. It's a who's who, baby. Anybody and everybody can play whatever the hell they want. That's what this set's all about, man. They just said you like a color, here's a primal, enjoy it. What that primal has, a nice backup, play. It. And that's it, man. And then you go from there. You just play whatever the hell you want. It's that simple. They literally made it so simple for you. But at the same time, it's not so simple. It's a lot of exploring. And if you don't have time to explore, you're just going to default to the same shit you were playing last Opus. Or the last two Opuses. Opus so, Psy. So, so, do you, so do you think Ritz Marsh is going to stay like relevant here? Yeah, why not? They got new toys. They got Typhoon. Or Typhon. Typhon. Whatever the thing's called. Typhon. Typhoon. Typhoon. Typhoon is a good card. Yeah. Typhoon is a really yeah, good card. Yeah, they, they got access to that, you know? And that's something that they can get off of uh, Dong, right? He goes and gets you a monster or a... Does it have to be an FFTA monster? I don't think so. I think it's just... No, just, or a card named Marsh, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, okay. Why not go get a Typhoon? Typhoon. Yeah. Tacos? Yeah. I, I, I wasn't done. <laughs> but go ahead, Tacos. <laughs> no, 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 you finish, you finish. I'm going to let you finish, he said. 
I'm done. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, tacos. Same question. All right. So you're asking what 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 from like Opus 13 is surviving in Opus 14? Yeah. Or and or what do you think we won't see anymore? Um, I don't know, man. Right, what was a lot of people were playing with Garland? Mox is probably dead. Um, yeah, probably the Samurai still. I think that's still pretty pretty relevant. Might start seeing dragoons again. You play Scions a lot. Do you think Scions have a have a have a home in this meta? Bro, uh, I don't know. I have to look at it. Uh, but they did get some new toys. I mean, considering all these primals are all fourteen, uh, that's a benefit, right? I guess. Um, but the rest of this, I I don't know, man. It, it seems pretty outdated. I mean, I like the deck, but I, I think they need some new scions, honestly. Doesn't doesn't the new uh, Uriage? It's a 14 character, right? That he reveals off the top and you can grab it? Yeah, that's one thing I'm messing around with, and I do like that. Okay. See, yeah, that's an option, right? Because, like you said, all the primals are 14 based. Cause I'm just thinking, like, oh, like, Titan in. Because in, in Scions, they never had a board clear, unless you're playing Toto. I mean, they, yeah, they normally play Toto, right? Yeah, they normally yeah. play Toto. Toto, Toto kind of seems like counter. You know, like against that, since you really just want to have sign backups too. So, yeah. Don't you just like go Wombo, put him to six, then drop Titan, and regardless of what they have, he's taking out like the Scions with him. That's true. And then take a point of damage. Yeah, and you just lost the rest of your your Scions and just, just win. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Things to think about. You play that with Oracle of Light and play, and then bring him right back. Ooh, yeah, because then you bring back the Ishtola, and then the Ishtola will bring you back something else. I mean, if you, well, you're in you're in Earth Lightning, right? So you just drop your Titan. Who cares what you lose, and then find a way to play the Regis, right? I mean, uh -huh. well, I guess. Well, yeah. we'll see. Uh, same question, uh, Sergio. I'm gonna. Everyone's gonna answer this one. Okay. Um, what do I think stays relevant? Uh, I still think actually Samurai is really good. Uh, the new Samurai uh, standard unit they printed is actually like pretty nutty. Um, I got to play against it over the weekend. I, I played a couple games and I played against that deck and it was like um, I was on the bounce deck where I was doing the Wind Water uh, Leviathan bounce deck and they had like Tenzin out and those standard units a couple in the break zone so it's like okay well if i get rid of this tenzin he just picks up the standard unit and blows up one of my guys right and so like, if i if i don't get rid of it then he just infinitely draws into more cards and keeps like filtering back these standard units so like once they hit that critical threshold of like seven samurais in the break zone uh which is a great movie by the way uh, it's it's very like very scary because they can nuke whoever and it leaves behind a 9k brave samurai so that's that's pretty scary um i actually still like i, I know uh, some of you guys are saying that you don't think monks survives just because garland's a thing I actually like i don't really find that to be the case at all i still think that monks is really good and i think if you add like motley honest um and maybe the new monk the standard unit they printed the deck is, is still pretty powerful and they have ways to play around Garland, right? Like, like nobody's going to pop five backups in front of Garland and just refill your hand for you. It's just a deterrent, you know? Right. I... Uh, other than that, I think those are the easy ones. What else was meta relevant? Oh, uh, Ice Wind. I think Ice Wind is actually like infinitely more powerful uh, now. Uh, it just got better. Uh, the last... The last set it was it was winning a lot, right? And now they have Bismarck. So we were talking earlier about the primals. Actually, as much as I, I personally love Leviathan, I think Bismarck is is possibly the strongest uh, of the primals just because of the way it works in those wind decks, um, where you can just do so much reactivation. Um, you can now use your force to ping things off, and then you get draw every time you use a bounce effect. Um, that's just insane. Like, me even coming in, like, picking something up, and then you draw two is, is completely absurd. And so the, the loops you can do now in the Ice Wind lock deck are, are going to be, like, pretty scary. 200 IQ instead of 100 IQ. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to go, like, drink some smart water before you play that deck. Plus ultra. Okay. Uh, Alex. 
Yeah. Same question. <laughs> Uh, what was the question? Sorry. Uh, what do you what decks do you think survive this meta, and what do you think, or which ones are going to get ruled out? Oh well, um, I never count Mono Fire out. Um, I didn't hear that discussed yet, but Mono Fire just is like one of those decks that just like does things. So uh, I don't think we'll see that deck completely disappear. Um, it needs some work, definitely though, because people are doing some pretty unfair things right now. But um, I do think Mono Fire, with some changes, continues to be a contender. And then uh, what decks con what decks are coming out is the Opus 13 version of Monks is dead. Uh, that deck's going to need to see considerable change. Um, and I could definitely still see Sophie.deck as, you know, just a continuous threat because... Sophie still, nothing has changed with Sophie. She's still de dealing a damage to your opponent for turn and drawing you a card. So uh, those would be my picks. Okay. Yeah, uh, on the topic of Monks too, um, playing playing on Monday, I found that like it was pretty unfair uh, up against a Garland. Like I was playing Daniel. Um, and uh, unfortunately for him, I drew the nuts as well. So it just seemed more in the in Knight's favor. Um but it's it's definitely going to be i don't know i haven't found a solution for it yet and i'm sure it's pretty like it's going to be pretty obvious but uh just it, that does make the deck really hard to fight against so i don't think monks are out either um but i think we might see a little less of them because there is it's not going to be the number one deck right it's not going to be the boogeyman anymore it's not going to be the oh can you beat monks do you have an answer for ursula kind of question anymore um and so that's where i stand uh, I don't like again. Like I said, I don't know too much of the the previous matter. You guys were more involved than I was last set. Um, I'm just coming back into this, going, you know, full throttle. Charlie's Angels two in Opus fourteen. Yeah, I think I think I think what happens with that whole monk thing was that before Opus fourteen, I think what you had to primarily focus on was some sort of board clear, and. The, Primals and, and on top of other cards, Opus 14 gives access to a lot more colors to have a lot more board clear. So that was kind of like, I felt like the pivoting point with what decks are you going to choose? Because at one point it's like, well, you know on Earth you've got access to Toto, you know on Fire you've got access to Philia, right? So like, can you base something around those two? And those are more or less is what the relevant effects is what going to keep you in against all these like, aggressive very wide decks that were seen more popular throughout opus 13 right monks um first uh samurai of still you know from time to time they'll go wide so you can still find those out there the lock and all that stuff you know eventually they start dropping their their o choose and they become forwards so you got like this other wide board so I think that that's where the relevancy of these opus 13 decks is like okay how well can you board clear and then what's your recovery plan You guys tell me, man. Yeah, yeah, I think that's. I think board clear was like where it's at, and the prime was just said, "Well, let's give one the almost all the colors." Uh, I agree. I, I agree with you that um, now it's everyone has access to that now, um, and that's going to help. And that's kind of what's going to define this meta too. Like, uh, who, how many, who has it, and who has it, who has more towards the end of it, right? Like, um, every deck is going to be able to present it, and if you don't have it, unfortunately, that that means you're, you know. SOL. Yeah, yeah. The gas is being stepped on by turn three, bro. It's no longer like, all right, bro, uh, backup pass. All right, cool. That's a great play. I'm going to backup pass. And then you go and you go drop your second backup and pass. No, it's like, you know, backup pass. And the next turn it's like, all right, cool. Uh, play this. It's going to draw me a card. I'm going to search. I'm going to play this for free. Uh, let's put two more things on the board. All right, cool. Um, yeah, two cards in hand. Pass to you. Oh, end phase. Here, I, I'm going to go back to five. You know, silly shit like that. Right. Okay. Well, uh, I only got one more for you guys. Um, and I guess, I guess, really, we've already covered it. But I'll, I'll, I'll re-elaborate it a little bit. I'll word it around. Which is, uh, we all played different things on Monday, which is cool. I'm glad it wasn't all, you know, we were or, you know, Garland.deck or Sophie.deck still, but um, what what is your next thing that you are building and why are you excited to build that? 
most. Uh, starting with tacos. Uh, I mean, everything just depends on what we pull. Uh, I can't really say what I'm going to build. You have to have um, a favorite though, right? Like, I don't know. I, oh, I, I still don't think that... I mean, I mean, I, you know, I just got the Knights, like, towards the end of Opus, uh, Opus 13. I still want to mess around with Agrius, so, I mean, that's probably where I want to go. Anything okay. that has to do with Knights. Okay. Uh, Andy? Aww. Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, where do I begin? I don't know, man. I mean, I'm excited what I'm playing with now. I just don't know if I'm going to keep going with it. I'm just, I like the the concept of um, Ice Lightning only because there's a new Al Cid. I really enjoy playing a card named Al Cid. Uh, but really, for me, what excites me is Luso because he does the whole uh, searching the top five for an FFT82, which then goes and finds you the strongest card in the game, which is a Lua. Fight me if you disagree. <laughs> um, Change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's what I like. So I'm basing it around just that concept of just you know finding the Alua, and he also finds you things that work well with the Lua, right? So Purdy, instead of Clan Gully, those cards can get you. Alusa can find you one, and then he's got that S ability, um, which is the same thing as his Enter the Field ability, which is also the EX Birth, right? But then this time he says you, you can play it onto the field. So as long as you don't have like name clash or you don't already have it on the field, chances are you're gonna play a Sid of Clan Gully, an Ilua, or a Hurdy for free, and you're gonna get their effects. You know, I, I kind of see it as a plus because you're you're using effects while also building your board, but at the same time you're also manipulating a bit of your deck and your break zone, so that you know if, for example, you do the Luso S ability. Finds your Hurdy. Well, next turn that Hurdy can get you that Luso so that you can use the S ability again and kind of just like filter through so you can kind of get that that Elua really fast. Because like you can get the, the first Elua off the search and then you kind of just stop drawing until you can find the other Elua so you can start using the Shoals, right? Um, but the whole focus of that is so you can start doing the FFTA2 package but then also throw in some stuff that can kind of like stave off aggressive build so that you can build towards your ultimate combo which is the ravana into the flans right so the idea is just to just attack with the ravana then when you pitch the flan for its effect you'll take a card out of your opponent's hand while reactivating ravana and hopefully you can get up to four attacks with it plus whatever you have on the field and that's where Lua comes in because then she can go in haste and all that stuff so it's cool all of that all of that works together as long as you can somehow some way find a way to take a a character put it into the break zone um then that primal activates so it's very it's very simple um i tried to do this in just the mono lightning element uh, but it just seems right now that combining those two elements they just play really well to each other and the only thing that i don't like that i'm definitely gonna be working on more is the summon lineup and just kind of like the numbers um only because i feel like you like, I'm reliant too much on Ramu's removal, which is really good, but it's also very one-dimensional. So it's like, you know it's coming. So it's very, like, it's it, like you can telegraph it so hard, and you know it's coming, and then your opponent can just play around it so well. And then with the fact that everybody's playing Althea, it makes that combo even harder to do. So I think as great and as easy and as one-dimensional as it is, and anybody can pull it off, and once you do pull it off, with minimal effort, you plus so hard. Um, there, it's also very easy to counter and play around that you might not always get it, you know? Um, so there's a lot of just pick and choose of different things and then trial and error and just flat out just grinding, right? Figuring out what works and what doesn't. And who knows, I think maybe eventually Ramu might even just not make the cut and, and get out and it opens up uh, a little bit more room for other cards that might work well with like the FFTA2 stuff. Um, I think it also might work well in Lightning and Fire because we have access to another Lua, which is really cool. So this is so we have the access to Shoal almost six times. But um, I think I think that's a really cool avenue for people who don't want to be playing 
you know, very strong wind and water and wind and ice decks and stuff like that. And they want something a little bit more casual. Excuse me. So, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think that's a cool place to to visit, you know, with the new Alcid. All right. So you're excited for Elua. <laughs> Yeah, all that, all, all of that, just just so to say, hey, I can play a little uh, more, yeah, yeah, more efficiently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's cool. <laughs> I, mean, I like I like Lusa. Lusa's dope. All Lusa right, want to play a little more? Yes. Uh, modified question, actually, for uh, Sergio. What are you excited to see? Like, is there a card that you think's just gonna, uh, like, what excite? What like, are you excited to see a certain deck, like? become really broken or something like do you think that there's a, a list there that's not that's going to come out this set that's just going to be like otk infinite loop i don't know about otk infinite loop uh i mean that sounds like a that's a matiski question uh when we get him on you can you can ask him about those but uh i definitely think that the lock deck is about as close to like that loop style of play that you can get to with the new Bismarck, like I, I just think Bismarck is such an incredible card, and one of my favorite things about it is that it triggers in the end phase. So you actually like if you move to end phase and you start, it, it starts popping off. Like there is no response chain to that. Like you can't do anything with it. So like in the Wind Water deck, I would have like Leviathan Bismarck out, go to end phase, pick up a Wind character, and then I trigger the draw off the the Bismarck, and then the the 9,000 reduction off the Leviathan. So that's, that's like, really powerful, the fact that you can't even answer that. Uh, same thing, like, with this, that Sophie had that effect as well, where Sophie goes all the way into the end phase, you can't even Amaterasu it, because you, you have to just accept it, because it's in the end phase. And so we're, I think we're seeing a lot more of these, like, end phase triggers, and I think that's, like, a big thing. Uh, at least for the deck, when I played it on Monday, that, that was a big thing I noticed. Uh, but I, I do think Bismarck is is probably the most powerful primal and the effects that it's going to give to a ice wind or even like a mono wind deck is just going to be crazy value like we talked about that typhon earlier the the one with the horrifying art um <laughs> and see that card is crazy right that's the death gates like effect where it just like kind of like eats this card out of play um and then it leaves behind not just the monster not, it's also a body if you have three wind backups um, but it's also a win character. So at end phase, you can use Bismarck to pick it up, and unlike the death gaze, nothing's coming back. It's it's staying in the deck where you put it. Um, and in this game, that that's really powerful, like an effect that like puts something back in the deck because everything is about CP efficiency, and you've you've already denied them the CP, so that's that's fine that it goes back to deck even though they'll draw it again. They still have to pay for it again. So I, I think something playing off of Bismarck is the closest you're going to get to like these loop type effects, where you can like just kind of steal the game and every turn, replay all the stuff you played the previous turn by picking them all back up. All right, sounds good. All right, well, guys, I think that's all the time we have for tonight. Um, we, you know, thank you guys so much for joining and listening, listening to us. Uh, I definitely do have a few. If if you've made it this far, right? If you're still with us, um, I'm definitely gonna throw in some plugs here. So get ready. <laughs> uh, thank you, TCG Titans, for stopping by and you know chatting with us. Uh, please make sure to check out his link uh, to his shop if you haven't before. Uh, TCG Taco, same to you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, he's doing a series, uh, New Game Plus, and he covers and he streams our locals every Monday. So make sure to check him out. Uh, Andy is a streamer, if you guys didn't know, Resident Evil and occasionally other games. But he is a speedrunner. If that is something that is that it interests you, please check the link below and stop by and uh, give him a like, a follow, and some love. Uh, Alex is just an amazing person. If you do not, if you feel like you need someone to talk to about cards, Alex is your guy. If you need a friend, Alex is your guy. Hit him up on Facebook. <laughs> he also has an OnlyFans, and his winner is pretty huge. <laughs> um, and as for me, you know me. Please. <laughs> <laughs> we just hit that R rating in the last minute. Hey, they deserve it. Right there. If you cut the video right there, I'm going to agree. As for me, 
Um, I am also streaming now. Um, I also have a merch shop you guys can check out. Um, I have custom designs I made. Uh, just a few fun things there. Um, the, all of these links will be down in the description below. Uh, we are the Triple Triad Podcast. I will definitely try to be back uh, with the whole crew. Uh, next it, Opus. No, no, no. Definitely before the next Opus. Um, if you have... No next Opus. They took the name out. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like for us to a uh, answer or talk about in the next one, or that you might want to come on and talk about yourself, uh, put them in the comments below, and then we can work, see if we can work something out for the next episode. Um, I'm your host, Emo Tempest. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye. What's that song? It's like. <laughs> What's that song? <laughs>